Hey, everybody. David here. So good to be with you every Monday night, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes, we are still doing the crowdfunding campaign. We met our goal. Thank you so much. God bless you all. But God laid it on my heart. There's so many churches out there, third world countries, poor churches. Pastors have asked me, David, is there any way I can watch the last evangelist? We don't have any money. It broke my heart. And God laid it on my heart. We need to put together money uh, to do DVDs and send them out free to people all over the world. Anyone that has no money, money shouldn't have anything to do with receiving uh, information, receiving the gospel, receiving the truth. So as we're raising an extra $10,000. Uh, we've raised about 800 of that so far. Thank you so much. Um, but I'm going to, the full 10, I'm going to spend it on DVDs and a workbook so they can give it to these kids and they can see, look, Yes, true. We give churches Bibles and we need to. And that's number one. That's the foundation scripture. But on top of that, we have to let people know what's going on with the end times. We don't have a right to keep this to ourselves. God has given us this information. We need to share it. Okay. So we have an Amber Alert before we go to our guests. Shanita, will you read that Amber Alert that came out here? Yes. Nyla Crockett, an eight month old baby, and um, with. Um, I guess the mother, Shanario Crockett, and she was last seen in Mesquite, Texas um, at 11 p.m. on the 21st. Okay. Uh, okay. And was there a license plate or any information we can give the gatherers? No. Um, okay. Okay. So say it one more time, please. What's the name? An eight-month-old baby, Nyla, yeah. and the suspect is Shanario Crockett. A okay. female, about five six, wearing a gray shirt. Okay. All right. So gatherers out there, we need to pray uh, for this baby. So um, if you'll go to the Lord in prayer, and we're going to pray for this baby toward the end of the show, and for uh, the parents, and for uh, complete, uh, um, uh, complete protection uh, that the no evil can come against this baby. Okay, so we're talking about demonic warfare. My guest is Ramon and Ruben. Uh, they're now married, but uh, before they got married, she gave them an ultimatum. She said, if you keep doing drugs, you're going to hell. Took them to a cemetery, you know. Hey, you know, uh, uh, who would have thought? Uh, but she saw Satan in the flesh, a guy in a black car uh, wearing black sunglasses, black clothes, and she believes it was Satan manifesting in the flesh. Behind him was a white car, uh, I believe that was an angel. So she believes she saw a demon in the flesh, an angel in the flesh. Ramona, you uh, you with me there? Yes. Okay. So you, uh, this was, you. how old were you when you took Reuben up to the cemetery? I was, oh, like, a, hmm, 20, 23. So in, in your, 23, Okay. Okay, but you started playing with witchcraft when you were really young. How young were you when you started experimenting with witchcraft? I was in ninth grade, but I didn't know it was witchcraft. Actually, oh. I didn't. I didn't. Um, I had a, a boyfriend at the time who was into witchcraft. I didn't know it. Okay. I believe he put a spell on me. But, All right. Uh, oh. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, so what were you doing to be into witchcraft? Uh, what what was what, what was the activities? Oh, so we we're, we were playing the Ouija board. We'd go to the park. I live next to a park. We would do it there. So uh, one day on Halloween, we went to um, a cemetery, either in Huntington Park or Cudahy. I'm not sure where. It was a long time ago. But we ended up doing, uh, me and three other friends, ended up doing the Ouija board at a cemetery on Halloween, and it it flipped out. That was a that was that was scary. the The whole plastic thing just went spun around in circles. The whole board popped up, and we screamed and and got out of there. But I now, believe that a spirit of death came into me that day because I ended up in a mental hospital um, when I was probably like nineteen. Okay, okay, hold on one second, Ramona. How old were you when you were playing with the Ouija board and your boyfriend put a spell on you? What was your age, was, roughly? I was in ninth grade, so I would say probably about 14 years old. 
Okay, so you were 14. Did you continue in these activities uh, 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 up until you ended up in the mental hospital? In other words... No, I did the week. Okay. I just did the Ouija board with him. Oh, okay. I didn't even like and, it. I hated it. I would mock it. Uh, okay. Did you, were you into drugs uh, before you went into the mental hospital? Yeah, very heavily into drugs. Okay. I started what, smoking speed. Okay. So what put you in the mental hospital? Was it a mental situation? Was it spiritual? Was it emotional? What causes people yourself specifically, to go into a mental hospital? Well, I believe it was a, a lot of things. I believe just dealing with generational curses um, and just being led the wrong way, uh, dabbling the, in the occult, brought in spirits, fornicating, okay. brought in demons, drugs, okay. brought in demons. So, yeah, I opened myself oh. to a lot. Do, do, do you believe that in most cases when people end up in a mental hospital for sake of identification, that it's usually spiritual, that it's demon activity against a person? Yes, most definitely. Yeah. So, Ruben, I want to ask you, you quit selling drugs and became a Christian. Uh, it, did you, when you became a Christian, did you just go to church one day and give your life to God? What, or, I mean, did you just quit drugs one day and go to church? How'd that happen? Um, it, it was a, a process. It was a process. I, I did. Uh, well, you know what? Actually, what happened is, uh, yeah, this is actually the, the, the what really woke me up is that one night I was at, at my mother's house. I had moved back into my mother's house. And I was in, in my room, and it must have been, it was kind of late at night, I'm going to say 12 o'clock, and someone came knocking on my door. Um, yeah, and it, and it was my sister, and I was like, kind of caught off guard, she came in kind of, uh, I don't know what you call it, like, uh, like urgent, there was an urgency, right? She came in, I need to speak to you, and uh, my, my sister uh, apparently, uh, you know, uh, was prophetic, right? And she said that God has spoken to her. She didn't know anything that was going on with me, but it was a long process. And, and, uh, she had, she had, a uh, uh, came and said, um, God showed me that they're going to kill you. Um, do you want to give your life to Jesus? And that, that night is when I gave my life, my okay. life to Jesus. Wow, Ruben. So here's my question. First of all, you poor guy. First, you get it from Ramona that they're going to come and kill you if you don't change. And your <laughs> sister comes in. Town. I tell you, if I was you, I'd, I'd definitely stay on the side of God the rest of my life because I don't want that kind oh, of yeah. stuff going on. Dude, listen, you go from most people just get saved. OK, you either better accept God or you're going to die. OK, yeah. Um, yeah. so anyway, she, she told you, look, I got a word for you, Ruben. Uh, that's it, man. No more playing around. You're going to die if you don't accept God. So you accepted God. Okay. Now, uh, here's my question to Ramona. Ramona, you were being delivered at one point. You had, I guess, demons in you or around you, but nothing could happen. They could not get the demons out of you because something was around your neck. What was that all about? Yeah, so we went to his um, his parents' house, I mean, his mom's house. They were having a prayer meeting. We, we needed her van. And so we went there. We went to go get the van. But uh, they told them that they wanted to pray for Reuben. So they started praying for Reuben. And as they were praying for Reuben, I started feeling sick and nauseous and dizzy and scared. And they were speaking in tongues. And so I never heard of tongues. I, I didn't know what was going on. I thought these people were crazy. And so... We ended up leaving. I went. I told him to take me home. I was supposed to go with him. And so when I got home, and this was really late at night, like 11.30 at night, I started throwing up. I, 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 felt, I felt so afraid. I was scared. I felt like there was so much evil around me. And so he, my husband ended up coming back because he had to go somewhere. So he came back about 1.30 in the morning, and he says, let's go. They need to pray for you. And I said, I'm not going back there. There's no way I'm going to go back there. So 
he took about a half hour of him convincing me to go back to get prayer. Um, so when I went there, they prayed for me from like two o'clock in the morning to four o'clock in the morning. And they just kept praying and I never heard of deliverance. I didn't know anyone could have demons. I didn't know anything. I didn't even know what was going on. I just knew I was sick and I was scared. So I was just there and they're praying for me. I had my eyes closed. And so about four o'clock in the morning, they had said, are you wearing jewelry? And I said, yeah. And so I took off, I had a necklace and I had a, a Catholic cross, but it was my uncle's. He got it from the Vatican. And she said, Jesus is not on the cross anymore. You need to take that off. And so once I took that off, it was like the demons that I didn't even know I had demons, but I felt things coming up my legs, uh, both legs, my arms, every part of my body. And it just came to a ball. Um, and then it went, boom, it just took off. I just seen it supernaturally. And then after, after it left, I felt free. I felt I couldn't believe it was happening to me. I didn't know what was happening to me, but his sister was praying and, and she had her hand on my back and it was hot. It was burning. And I didn't know, I didn't understand why it wasn't, it wasn't hurting me, but it, I didn't, I couldn't understand anything. Now like, I know that it was the fire of God burning up all, you know, everything that was in me. And then she said, um, Jesus is here, you know, he's hugging you. And I felt so, I couldn't, I couldn't understand it. I couldn't grasp it. And so, but I just, I welcomed it because it felt so right, so peaceful, so. So, so you, you so, were delivered at that point, Ramona, you were delivered of demons. You had demons inside of you. You were delivered. They said 15 demons. Are, I couldn't believe it. You had 15 demons in you. Um, okay, because uh, we don't have much time left, but uh, sure. these demons, did they identify them uh, of any type of addiction or of anything yeah. or they just said, what were they? They had um, the drugs, the, the fornication, rape, because I had experience that in high school. Um, everything that, that all that I went through in high school, yes, they identified it. And they didn't wow. help me. So, so demons, because I say, I say in the gathering here that the demons, uh, there's demons of addiction. You know, we talked about uh, sexual perversion. These are just face uh, names for demons. So every thing you see, most of it is a demon behind it, right? Yes. <clears throat> and yeah. and Ramo Ramona, before we close, I, I need to make sure that I understand this and that the gatherers do. Are you telling me that? this cross that you had on it was a catholic cross it was a cross that had jesus on it still on the cross that the reason they could not deliver you or you could not be delivered is because you had this emblem on your chest and once you took it off the deliverance became successful yes wow yeah wow that okay so i, I as we close, I, I want to point this out. And I hope I hope you guys out there, I have a lot of ex-Catholics uh, who are who who are gatherers with us. OK, it doesn't matter. I, I'm not going to just bring out Catholics. I'm going to bring out every religion, every you know tradition, every denomination that puts anything above God is that when you have these emblems in your house, when you have these emblems in your car, when you have these emblems yep. around your neck, don't expect any type of deliverance. Don't expect blessings. Expect complete chaos in your life. You know, I have yeah. one uh, a friend of mine that had a cross, a Catholic cross hanging uh, from their mirror, and they were constantly getting in wrecks. Their car would look like a, you know, it's a, a piece of junk. I go, how many, there's, how, how many times have you had this thing in a wreck? Oh, at least 10. And I saw that cross up there and said, you got to get this cross out of your car. Uh, Ramona, I, thank you so much, you and Ruben, for being with me. We're out of time, but I got to have you guys back on, man. You got so much to share with the gatherers here. Thank you. God bless thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much, Ruben and Ramona. Uh, amazing couple. Uh, I uh, met them at the conference. And, uh, Drew, I tell you, if you're uh, Ruben, uh, if you're in his shoes, uh, actually, I'd like to be a Reuben because there is no in between. It's either heaven or hell. There is no, you know, 
hey, I think I'll sit on the fence. You're either, buddy, you're either going to live or you're going to die. Make a choice now, okay? That's, uh, okay, so um, I want to pray for you guys. Uh, we're going to do communion tonight. We're going to do prayer first, and we're going to communion. Uh, we're performing communion in what I would call, it's another country. Uh, some of these countries uh, are, are, are not privileged like, you know, the Western world. But I want you to know, it doesn't matter who you are where you are. God loves you. Uh, even if you're listening to me on an iPhone someplace and you're sitting on a dirt floor in, a, in another country and, you know, you're wondering how you're going to get breakfast tomorrow, whatever, God loves you and, and God is watching over you. Okay. So, and by the way, he's lifting you up. You know, God looks after people like us. God loves the poor people, the poor that are humble, the poor in spirit, uh, and he detests the rich. I'm talking about people that lean on their riches. Okay, so um, we're going to be doing communion tonight. Um, and uh, you don't have to have a bottle of wine. You don't have to go get a, a, a bread. You don't have to have this little cracker that the churches pass out or the little Kool-Aid. Nothing wrong with it. I'm not coming against that. But what I'm saying is what we're doing tonight is symbolic. Okay. If God is leading you to get a cracker, to go get a piece of bread, to go get a cookie, to I don't care, get a Rice Krispie. It does, it's symbolic, okay? This is symbolic, okay? If you have no Kool-Aid, if you have no colored drink, get you some water. It is symbolic, all right? It's a, you do this in remembrance of me, Jesus said. So please, if God's landed on your heart, get you what the church calls elements, uh, you know, really uh, the Passover meal that Jesus ate, they were eating a real meal. And I believe communion can be taken while you're eating a regular meal. I know a lot of churches think that's blasphemy, but uh, it's, it's not, it's biblical that you can have communion within a meal. Okay. So if God leads you, get your uh, bread and your, your, uh, liquid in your bread together. We're going to be doing that in a few minutes. I want to pray for you guys. Um, and I want to pray uh, for the Ramonas and the Rubens out there uh, that are have not been delivered yet. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pray for that little eight month old baby that was uh, abducted, that we had the Amber Alert. We're going to pray for her. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. I pray for each and every person here in this gathering. I pray for uh, Jared. I pray for Pastor Mike. I pray for the guest. I pray for Shanita. I pray for each and every person that has helped us on this broadcast. I pray tonight for the communion. Lord, there's people out there that they're hearing this message for the first time. And it's a lot. I'm asking, Father, that you will touch their minds, that this will process in the way that they're able to do it that no matter what, God, you want us to stand up to the evil of the world. You want us to know how to battle the demons. You sent your son, and that was the main thing that he did. I'm praying for those that need finances met, that need provision. I'm asking for a healing of their finances. There's a gentleman out there that's really sick. It's like in the groin area, stomach. I'm asking for a healing. I'm asking for a restoration of families. There's several families out there right now. It's, just, it's Father, it's, it's dire. It's dire. I'm asking that the fathers will start open the Bible up and start reading to their children. I'm asking, God, that you will touch the fathers in every household that will step up to the plate and be a father. And for the, and for the fatherless, Father, I'm asking that you step in. I know you do. And that you let the mother know that she's not alone. Let the children know that they are secure in your love. And I'm asking if it's possible that the, the families without a father, that, that if there's someone for the mother that she can meet and they become a family, I'm asking that happens. I'm asking for relationships right now that a guy and a girl are going together, but I'm asking for the proper type of dating in this relationship. I'm asking that you can tell the, the, the boy if he's right for the girl and the girl if he's right for the boy. Keep it pure, Lord. I thank you. Pray for that little baby that's been abducted. 
And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to go to communion. Um, and uh, just let me know, Jared, when we're ready to do the communion. Uh, and then we'll come back to me and we'll close out. God bless you. So here we are at Sun Studios. Uh, we're on the set uh, filming Last Evangelist. Let's go into the studios. I want to show you some stuff. Come on in. All right. So you can see here. Oh, there's Ruben. Hey, Ruben. He's the guy that gets all of our equipment together. Hey, Ruben. He's a electrician, does uh, gaffing, gripping. Uh, but as you see, this is a very cool place. Here we are in the studio. And what I like about being in this place is it's very independent. You know, the thing with Last Evangelist is I can do what I want to do. I don't have to yield to studios, to corporations, to investors. You know, it's because of partners like you that makes it possible for guys like me to tell the story that I feel like I need to tell. And information you guys need to have, you know. I, I, this to me is more than a TV series. It's more than a movie. It's like a movement, you know, because of the way we're doing this. Um, you know, partner funded. In that way, we can do whatever it is we want to do. Let me introduce you, everybody. So there's uh, Allie. She does script. We got uh, Harmony on makeup. Shanita on tech. And uh, uh, you can see we have a really nice grid up there. You see the grid? So I'm an anointed man because God loves me. I'm an anointed man because of you, because of the gatherers, because I have a family. I have a spiritual family every Monday night. And I can't tell you how thankful to God I am for you. And I thank all the prayer warriors. And I thank for the people that uh, have donated to this ministry. And when you do net donate to the ministry, the, the money goes into the ministry. Okay, we're little, so you can see whatever, you know, what we do with it and everything but i just want to let you know to bring these shows to you to bring every monday night it does cost money to keep the ministry going it does cost money that's aside from last evangelist so i thank you guys for supporting the ministry okay uh you can go to uh, uh lastevangelist.com make a donation okay so we're going to do communion uh we're going to actually another country international internationally we're going to do the communion god bless you guys All right, Emma. What do I say? Good evening. Good evening, guys. Uh, today we're gonna do communion, and uh, I'm on. A, I'm actually gonna share a little bit, a little bit of something of uh, of that's neglected in in a lot of uh, communion teaching. A lot of a lot of communion they talk about do this in remembrance of me, Jesus, which is true, but there's a lot deeper uh, spiritual. Uh, something spiritual that happens whenever you take communion mm -hmm. and something that happens when you take communion is that is that it actually is spiritual warfare that you're doing which people might not think about it's just it's just something like you're just drinking wine and, and you're and you're and you're uh, eating bread i mean what spiritual battle is there but in first corinthians 11 it talks about first uh, corinthians 11 verse 25 it says in the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, which is what we're talking about. Do this in remembrance of me. But it talks about this is a new covenant 
in, uh, in my blood. And so whenever you do communion, it is important to remember his covenant. And whenever you struggle with certain addictions or whenever there's something that, that you're battling with, you can do this so that whenever, per se, per se you would struggle with alcoholism, you could, you could put that alcohol bottle or whatever, something in front of you, and then do communion in front of it and saying, I have to step across this covenant in order to drink that bottle. And so therefore, you, you punch it right in the gut, you go right head on, on in it, and the next time the devil comes and tempts you, you go, no, I have a covenant with, with Christ that I'm no longer an alcoholic. And therefore, and you can do that with pornography, you can even do that with a TV, if you struggle with even being addicted to watching TV all the time, you can do it right in front of the television and say, no, this is not, is not going to be a part of it. Because it goes on to say in verse um, um, 28, it says, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. This is talking specifically about about when you do this communion, you got to examine yourself. What do I struggle with? What is this addiction that I'm struggling with? And take that before the Lord. And then you do, you take in this communion and say, you know what, Lord, I have to step across my covenant that I've made with you in order, in order to uh, step into that addiction, to that sin that I'm struggling with. And so, and so you can do it if you want to, if, you, if the spirit leads you to, whenever you're struggling with something, Take it to the Lord and say, here, I'm going to take a communion and I'm going to make a covenant between you and me that I'm no longer going to be a part of this. And so it's actually spiritual warfare that you're, you're actually fighting spiritually with the devil. And so the devil cannot cross over, cannot go through Jesus' blood because that covers you. And you've made that covenant between him and you. Anything you want to share? Amen. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. I... You know, to be honest, I've grown up in church, and when I, when we do communion, um, I've always just taken the the glass and the bread, and then closed my eyes, and and I haven't really connected with the Lord with it. But the way that you just put it has really given me a deeper understanding that it's it's really um, it is spiritual warfare. It's a it's a spiritual representation, and it's it's our bold access to the Father that we have been cleansed by His blood. So we're just going to go ahead and jump into communion here. If you have your your glass, uh, like like David said, it, it can be a glass of water. It, it can really be um, whatever is is representing uh, Jesus's blood and what He did for you. And we'll just take a moment here, and we'll do um, we'll we'll do His His uh, His blood here. And you can just go ahead and take your sip. And then if you have something that represents Jesus's body, it can be a cracker. Like, like, like David said, it can be really anything. And we're going to go ahead and break this, this bread where we are here. And this is representing what, um, what Christ went through in order for, for you to be broken from those addictions, in order for you to have bold access to the Father. So, Lord, we just thank you so much for your sacrifice. And we just want to acknowledge you right here. And we, we want to be intentional about just pressing into you and saying, thank you, Lord. We don't take this lightly. We're doing it in remembrance of you. And give us each a deeper understanding and understanding of this individually, just like I haven't had a good understanding, but now you're giving me revelation. God, each person that eats this, give us a deeper understanding and a deeper reverence of you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, guys. God bless you all. God bless you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, uh, guys and girls, uh, there for doing that. I tell you what, this communion was really capital C on communion. Okay, communion—it's a union with God, and I really appreciated everything that uh, these young people said. Okay, and I appreciate you. Okay, God bless you. So good to be with you. I'm gonna see you next Monday. And uh, yeah, we're in a cop car. Uh, we're using for last evangelist. We threw the devil in the back seat. He's been arrested. Um, he's gone. So uh, we thank you, God, for uh, for your uh, faithfulness uh, for being with us every uh, Monday night. I want to thank you for being with me every Monday night. Thank all the prayer warriors and thank the the ministry team. God bless you. And remember, until you found something 
or dying for. I mean, you've never really lived. And trust me, trust me, the most honorable thing, the thing that makes me the most excited in life, okay, even more than a good cup of coffee, is the fact that little old me, nobody, God has chosen to use little oh nothing me in the kingdom of God. And he's chosen you right where you are right now. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to get a degree. You don't have to right now where you are. God has given you the power. He's transferred that power to you and you have it. All right. So just remember, um, so you found something worth dying for. You've never really lived. God bless you. See you next week.